Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Very Good. well, thank you. Okay. I'd like to start off by telling you something that none of you would have heard of, by the way, but it's had relevance to the practice of medicine in New Zealand. It's called the FSMB, the Federation of State Medical Boards. And it's an organization in the United States that was founded in 1912 and is actually a private organization. They get dues from each state and they get $10,000 from each state. So it's just over $500,000. Um, but then they employ 220 full-time staff with lawyers and doctors, etc. Um, and they control the practice of medicine, they control me licensing, the standards of medicine, and their aim is to eliminate all non-drug forms of medicine. And I've got colleagues over in America who um, can vouch for this. Now, what relevance could that have for New Zealand? In 2006, the Medical Practitioners Competence Assurance Act was passed here in New Zealand. Up until then, doctors could do whatever they thought was appropriate to help their patients get well and stay well. And they could use herbs, they could use homeopathy, they could use lots of other things. But all of a sudden, this medical act was passed and when I looked at the wording of that act, I saw that some of it was verbatim from the FSMB literature. And from that date, 2006, the Medical Council in New Zealand could do random audits on doctors. But up until then, there had to be a patient complaint before anything could be done. And all of a sudden they could do random audits. And guess who was the very first one to be audited? I'll leave that up to you. What we're dealing with here now is an, a significant enlargement on that. Because not only are they controlling medicine in America, but they're trying to undermine and control the practice of medicine in all the other countries around the Pacific. There are 12 countries involved in the TPPA. And it's not America that's trying to get in, it's big business getting in. Because in fact there are a lot of people in America, even congressmen, that are against the TPPA. Just like there are here and in Australia. Here we've got Pharmac. In Australia, they've got the Pharmaceuticals Benefit Scheme, which is much the same, which and they can look at the best cost-effective management of illnesses. So Pharmac is dealing with pharmaceuticals, with drugs. And they can look where they can get generics, and if they're as good and they're cheaper, they can do it. But what is going to happen if the TPPA gets passed in its present form is that the companies, that, the drug companies, can move in and dictate to New Zealand and Australia and other countries um, what drugs they can use. They can, they can use a pr something that's called evergreening. Um, what the drug companies do, they have a patent that could last for 20 years. When it's due to run out, they can do a slight change to their drug and change the tablet, for instance, so that it's long-acting, slow release, and they can claim a further patent and prevent generics from coming in. So the costs, of course, will spiral up. 
Now, last month, the Lancet Journal, one of the top medical journals in Europe, there was a, um, a feature in it on the TPPA and some correspondence in that included um, authors from Australia and New Zealand. Now, I'll just quote from that. It involves what are called investor state dispute settlement. Now, this is a, a, an international court system where companies can sue governments. And this is precisely what's happened in Australia once they brought in plain packaging for cigarettes. They're being sued for 500 million. And I think it's a shame on the New Zealand government that it seems that they're, from what I can understand, they're waiting until the results of this before finalizing plain packaging here. They ought to move straight in, in line with Australia. So if John Key's got any guts, he would say, right, we are going to bring this in right now and support you. So this investor state dispute settlement, it provides, and I'll quote directly, it provides uh, provisions allowing investors to sue governments if policy changes affect the value of their investment. So when you think of this, if they think the value of their investment in a drug is being undermined because a government is changing its policy, they can sue us. So they can constrain government's ability to regulate on the basis of the precautionary principle, for instance, or even to implement health policies. Even if those policies are based on good scientific evidence. And these courts are totally outside the jurisdiction of any of the 12 countries, including America. Furthermore, and this I think is going to be covered later on, they can bring in GE, GE drugs, GE medicines, GE foods, GE seeds, and we won't be able to block them, which I think is a huge threat. Um, can we make a difference? Six months ago, following a very long battle in America, cable TV and big business failed to control the internet. There was a major campaign to get corporate control of the internet. And there was a nationwide campaign against it, rallies, hundreds of thousands of emails sent to the Federa Federal Communications Commission they were swamped nationwide and eventually Obama went on television and agreed that internet neutrality would continue. That showed that if the people power can succeed, if it can do that, it can do it here with the TPPA. But each country, all of the countries really need to get together, the public need to get together and tell our politicians to tell the bureaucrats that are sitting there full of self-importance, prepared to sign international documents that they, can, they should back off because it's the people that are more important. Thank you.